Okay, welcome to the second video uh, for the lecture series. This is class Asteroidia. So the sea stars. This is the first class that we're looking at in terms of the echinoderm, five classes that you'll be responsible for. And so asteroid, you think of as uh, something that's going to come from outer space, a star. And here we have the common uh, classic starfish shape, five sides, and this one is um, taken uh, by Paul out at Volkner Rocks. Um, let's and since they have five stars, or sorry, five arms, generally sometimes they have more. But let's start talking about the arms. The arms have a groove called the ambulacral groove, and um, ambula means uh, mobile. So if somebody's ambulatory, uh, and you hear that medical term, that means they can walk themselves, they can move themselves to, maybe they can get to the toilet from their, from their bed. They're ambulatory. Um, and the groove has rows of two feet from the water vascular system and spines to protect it. So let's have a look. So the oral surface is the side with the mouth, and that faces down. The aboral surface is the top, and that faces up. Okay, so here you'll see the ambulacral groove, uh, which will you'll find in the bottom of every starfish arm, and that you'll see that the two feet, when you look very closely at it, stick out of that ambulacral groove, the walking groove and the mouth is in the center. There's one mouth for this at the center of the body. All right, so on the top, you have the anus at the, where the uh, waist goes out, right in the center of the central disc. The madreporite, not very far away. That's uh, offset on the central disc and uh, the arm. And so when we're looking at these in lab, uh, you'll be able to see the madreporite, which we talked about in the last video. Here's a close-up of starfish skin, uh, the upper surface, and this is what is so interesting about these organisms, is there's a lot going on when you start looking at them closely. Now, you'll see the little uh, white-tipped blue um, rods that come up. Okay, so they're white-tipped and they look like little um, pinchers, like little uh, arrowheads almost. Um, so, And that's what they are. They are actually little pinchers. All right? And you'll see also on the little um, blue surfaces a whole lot of small little um, open jaws as well that are also little pinchers. And so these things are like claws, much like the claw of a crab and they um, are able to uh, um, grasp and uh, pinch and chew, not really chew as in masticating for food, but they can crush um, small items. And we'll have a closer look at those in the next slide. The um, bubbly looking things that look like finger-like little projections, there's obviously lots and lots of surface area, and those things are project um, through their openings that go into the inner internal body of the, the starfish and the action of movement forces water around and that way water uh, because there's so much surface area oxygen can diffuse into uh, and out of, and co2 out of the um, of these little uh, fin finger like projections okay and those are called papulae they're sort of analogous to a, a, a gill, except that there's no circulatory system that's driving blood around through those papulae. But um, it's quite a busy little surface of uh, the aboral surface of the uh, starfish, the upward facing surface. Here's a picture of the pedicillaria closely. Now, Here's another picture of a um, one from something called uh, Toxanustes, which is a, uh, sorry, 
this is style ast areas okay which is another type of um, uh, um, predatory uh, fish they can actually catch fish so you can see how good that would be at grasping something that was trying to get away and what you'll notice is that unlike almost any hard surface in the ocean uh, if you leave a hot um, piece of concrete or pipe or almost anything in the ocean and come back and check it in a couple of months it will be colonized extensively by um, things that would like to use it as a substrate so any hard surface like the spine of a starfish is um, something that uh, a drifting little uh, dispersal phase a larval dispersal phase will settle on and try to make it their home now, uh, one of the main functions of these pedicillaria is to keep those um, organisms clean or off of the, uh, the top of the starfish. And you'll never see a starfish that has um, organisms settled onto its uh, spines. Okay, here is a picture of the 11-armed um, starfish that... Um, has the is out of the water but you can see the spines and the pedicillaria um, which are the little white cross hatches okay <clears throat> the this is the end of the uh, of the arm has the tube feet sticking out and these ones have a sensory kit capacity at the and that's the figure on the left figure a uh, you'll see that um, that these things are reaching out. Uh, they have a light receptor. Re they have light receptors at the end of the arm, and those ones are also sort of tasting the water as they go. Um, and on the right hand side, you can see the ambulacral groove with all of the tube feet within it, and the ambulacral spines on both sides of the groove. And what can happen is if the starfish is threatened, those spines come together like uh, gates, or if you put two combs together, the teeth of the combs uh, overlapping one another, then it forms uh, a grid or a gate that stops organisms from um, getting their uh, teeth in there to bite away at the, at the flesh, the soft flesh of the tube feet within the uh, internal area of the starfish. Oops. Okay. And here now is a picture of the interior of the um, starfish. And there's a nice link to a feeding on the, that URL at the bottom of this um, slide. So if you cut away the starfish uh, top surface the aboral surface okay and you look at what you find in the arms you'll see number one gonads okay which tend to be uh, a little bit smaller most of the year than the digestive glands okay? and the gonads though when they are um, in the breeding phase will fill the arm. They're just, um, they get huge. And in fact, uh, I know that there are sort of some people that eat the, uh, the eggs of the starfish. They're very much like Kinero, except for quite a bit more bitter. Um, the digestive glands are very big relative to the size of the body. And we'll talk about why in a second. But also, if you look at the center, just above the mouth, you'll see that there are actually two stomach compartments, one on top of the other. Okay, so um, one stomach will actually evert out of the mouth. It actually goes out of the mouth and they surround their prey or their food and then the mouth comes out, the stomach comes out very much like a, um, uh, if you had a plastic bag coming out of a small hole and then 
draping over the food. Okay, so here's what well, they'll do. They may, um, if the food is uh, external, uh, or if the food is not um, trying to protect itself like this muscle, then they just drape that first stomach over it and, st and digest it externally. If the, uh, if the prey is a shellfish, like this one, it can pull apart the shell, and all it needs to have is about a tenth of a millimeter of an opening, and then it can stick its stomach into the shell, start pumping out massive amounts of digestive juices, and digest that, um, that prey item right in its own shell. So its protection becomes uh, its, uh, the starfish's stomach, as, as you, um, if you will. It gets digested right in its own home. Anyway, so uh, you can imagine that a lot of um, digestive juices, since it's outside, of, since the stomach is outside of the body, will just get washed away, and they do. So that is why the um, digestive glands need to be so large within the starfish arm. They're large because they pump out massive amounts of uh, digestive enzymes because a lot of it gets washed away, which may seem very inefficient, but obviously is efficient enough because uh, evolutionarily they wouldn't be there if they hadn't been able to be well adapted to their environments. So the second stomach is where a lot of the juices are sucked up and further digested and then shared around to the rest of the colony. The digestive glands are called pyloric cica. Okay. The, the stomach at the bottom closest to the mouth is called the cardiac stomach. And the upper stomach is called the pyloric stomach. So you, you can freeze this and take notes on it or um, read it at your leisure. They're uh, generally dioecious, um, that means two sexes, broadcast spawning, and females can produce as many as two and a half million eggs. So starfish, when they're breeding, can produce massive amounts of offspring and bloom very quickly. Here's a picture of a um, starfish releasing sperm. And here's another one. They go into this classic breeding pose, which is also very much like eating, and it's a crown of storm, thorns, starfish releasing eggs, and another one releasing eggs. Asexually, they can split into, um, uh, they can split in two or even more parts. They have incredible regenerative ability, and it requires that just one-fifth of a central disc with the attached arm is present to grow a new body. And here's what it looks like. So this one hasn't been working out and with uh, its left arm, it's uh, actually growing a new body. So one arm is left. And this one has done something um, much like uh, the uh, Nidarians, or sorry, much like the, uh, well, Nidarians do do it, but the fission where the two halves have split in half. And an interesting experiment which um, uh, is possible is if a starfish is left in say a bucket of seawater and the water quality goes horribly off then each of the arms will separate and crawl away from each other trying to find a new habitat in which they can regrow the rest of their body. All right, that's it for asteroidians, and we'll, in the next video, we'll focus on um, echinoidea.